What's going on, y'all? Hollywood Divas, season four, episode, I mean, season two, episode five, I believe. Girl, who gives a shit? Let's just get into it. Okay, so it starts off with Rashawn and Sleepman had slept over at um Lisa's house, right? And they talking about what happened, and he apologizing to her, and, you know, I didn't mean for it to get that way, but, you know, Forrest was doing a lot, and it's understandable. You know, they probably did have intentions of just sitting there, you know, having a regular conversation. The fuck? Okay. Having a regular conversation and not getting so heated like that, but emotions was running high, and, you know, shit just popped off, because it, it's like... And I can understand how the emotions got high at this meeting because you're trying to get your point across. And when you know somebody is not doing right and they're not trying to own up to their shit, that shit tends to piss you the fuck off because it would do me like that. And I either get quiet or you 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 can tell when I'm pissed off because I turn red. OK, you can just see it on my face and I just y'all better shut the fuck up. OK, let me fucking speak, bitch. You know, it was something like that. So. Paula and Forrest out here walking, you know, doing their thing with each other. And here he go telling Paula, you know, so I come there and it was like an ambush. And then Rashawn, he stood up to me and they basically saying that I didn't write the script and all this stuff. Wait a minute, what? Don't none of them got claims to writing. Don't none of them. Paula ain't got no, uh, she was like, Elise ain't got uh shit. Or Golden don't do nothing. Or Lisa and then said, when she said that shit about Countess. She was like, counters who spent $29,000 on um a damn surgery where you can't see a lick of a centimeter of what's been lost or whatever. I said, wait a minute. That was not even necessary, okay? That wasn't even necessary. That shade to go, you know, to Paula. I mean, to counters like that. And I get it. When you um pissed off at somebody, you fight, uh, you fight with your words or whatever. You try to hurt people. But truth be told... Countess is probably the most civil head in the whole thing. She was trying to calm that shit down. Bitch, let me tell you something. Countess was sitting there eating her fucking nachos the whole damn time. Yeah, she was like, uh-uh, put that shit down, put that shit down, don't do that. But she continued and ate her food. And you gonna make fun of her. I'm so tired of them. I'm so tired of them, you know, acting like they this girlfriend. I don't give a fuck. And then in these confessionals, making these little side-ass remarks, shade marks to her. You know, because of her size and all this stuff. But you know what, Paula? You can diss her size, but she got the money, $29,000 $29, to go ahead and get her motherfucking life of suction and let it go to waste if she fucking want to. She ain't got to be on nobody's pay payment plan, okay? She got her fucking house. She got her affairs and orders. What about you? With your ass rolling up into Lisa Wu's house in that base-ass, 1995-ass model for Taurus with a fucking handicap sticker. That better been your mama cop. Bitch, get the fuck out of here with that shit. That pissed me off. And then you talking to Forrest like, you don't let no um person ever get you out your element, get you out your bite, that you got to attack them, you got to do this, because that's what they was trying to do. And I'm sitting here like, this motherfucker is lying to her. Because <laughs> he flipped it and basically said that, you know, they were saying that, you know, he didn't write shit. No, what they were saying was that they all deserve credit for writing that because... He did not come up with them characters. And then Paula trying to make it seem like they didn't do anything either. And I'm sitting here like, you dumb bitch. All we got to do is rewind the tape from season one. When y'all came together first for this stuff. And, you know, that's what happened. Okay? you they Everybody gave a synopsis and a character background analysis of their character. They gave us a forest. Forest built the story around. It. They did contribute. They did contribute. They set it up. For him to write the story around it. Yes, he deserved credit as a writer. They also deserve their credit for the input. And once again, this is what it means. To do your fucking contracts and sign this shit. And get all the logistics clear so we won't have to be going through this bullshit. Okay. So she pissed off and she talking. I mean, she was talking shit to Forbes like she was the pimp. I was like the roles reversed just that quick. Then we get this, um, you know, she all in her feelings and shit, especially at Rashawn, talking about some Rashawn ain't shit, you know, he ain't never wrote no Oscar worthy screenplay or whatever the fuck, and I'm sitting here like, neither has Forrest, and neither has you ever won anything like that, even close to that, okay, bitch, you ain't even got a BET award, do you, alright, you can, um, you can go somewhere with that bullshit, I just, I just wasn't here for that, and, we get from there, 
And Countess, you know, she with her um, manager, Noni, Noni, or whatever the fuck. They at the store. Her style is supposed to be getting some clothes or whatever for her. I guess they finna... I don't know what they was finna do. The video or some shit. I don't know. But the stylist wasn't getting back with the um, manager. Countess come in and the style, uh, um, her manager telling her what's going on. And basically, she was just like, I noticed that, you know, his decline in workmanship. And basically, the manager, you know... It's like he's getting comfortable and she was just like, maybe he just needs to be off the team. So that is just something else that Countess got to deal with on top of the fact that her father's sick and going over this shit, stupid shit with the wife's sisters. Now we get to the part, Lisa Wu is having this um, housewarming party because she's finally, you know, in her apartment for real, for real, uh, in her place in LA. Got her kids and all that stuff out there. You know, Gabrishan there. Everybody, everybody's having a good time. She come in, give them little footies because that's a little Chinese tradition, which I think it should be a tradition everywhere because you ain't finna carry outside inside my house, okay? That's what it is. You know, my mom is just like that. And um, the thing of it is, Everybody was just chill. Then here come Paula rolling up in that fucking based ass fucking um, Ford Taurus. You know, for someone who got all these jobs and all this. Girl, let me stop. It looked like she just put that wig on in the car. Okay, I'm saying. And it was just, it was just stupid. She came in with an attitude. And here's my thing. This is not the place nor the time to do some shit like this. If you had something to get off your chest, Paula, you could have called up them and uh, asked to meet somewhere else or, you know, asked to meet at your place or their place at a different time. You do not come to somebody's housewarming party, sit down, or when people asking you stuff, Rashawn was like, do you want the cheese ball? I made those. Oh, no, I don't want nothing yet. So, you know, she being petty, she don't want shit to do with Rashawn and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, fine. Because that dude um, was doing stuff to your claim to did something to your husband because he called him out on his bullshit on his fuckery and like Rashawn was like both if I just uh it was just stupid you know you don't come to somebody's place with a fucking negative attitude like that if you was gonna have that negative negative attitude you should have just said you know what until we resolve this issue I'm not you know I'll decline I'll decline okay and then we just have a meeting later and talk about things but no you came and brought all this negative energy and of course Rashawn is standing right there. Of course, he's going to overhear what you're saying about him. So, of course, he's not going to just be quiet. He's not going to be quiet because he's going to say, no, 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 no. What you're saying and what your husband told you is not the 100% truth, okay? I'm going to defend myself because I'm right here. And if you don't want to talk to me, that's some bullshit. I don't talk. See, this is why I don't talk to men because men are always doing this stuff and they always got us going against each other. Paula has a real thing about men, okay? I don't know what it is. She just really thinks like men are the devil. That's what it feel like. I mean, oh, a man this, and I don't trust men because they get this because, you know, treat us like this because we feel I get it, but she just do, does a whole bunch. Paula is the type of person that don't like to take responsibility for herself, so she deflect blame and put it on others. And, you know... Rashawn was like, do you want to have a conversation? I always been team Paula, but you know, I'm going to call bullshit when I call bullshit when I see it. And that's basically what he was doing, trying to get shit together. But no, you don't want to talk about it with him. Mind you, it's the he the person that y'all really have the issue with, you know, at that little meeting. And how you going to get pissed off and say that they coming at, his, at your husband and being disrespectful or whatever when you were supposed to show up? You were supposed to show up. Now, had you shown up, this wouldn't have never happened, okay? And then, you know, they telling you that your husband was, you know, disrespectful, violent and all that stuff, which he was, you know, and you feeling some type of way, you're going to get up and leave, try to leave out. And then you going at it with Rashawn and going to say something, bad girl, let me tell you something. And he said, bad bitch. Golden was like, hey, hey, hey. And I was like, hold on. I get that it's a little disrespectful, but I understood it. And I was not mad at him. Not because I don't like Paula, but because of the simple fact that we can clearly see that Rashawn is a gay man. We can clearly see that. But just because he's gay, that don't give you the right to say, girl. That don't give you the right to say that to him. And the way that Paula was saying it, she was throwing shade. And he caught that shit and threw it right back at you. Come on, you can't outread a gay man. I'm just fucking, I'm just telling you that shit. Most of them, you just, they will hurt your fucking feelings. And he caught that shit so quick and threw it right back. Shade me shade and there you go.
So they was like, uh-uh, Paula, don't go, don't go. I'm like, she always fucking running away. Let that bitch go. Let that bitch go. Don't nobody give a fuck. Let her go. But they gonna go outside and talk to her. I was like, uh. Child, and when Paula was like, fuck your cheese balls, my husband got balls, and them the only balls that I'm eating. Girl, didn't nobody need to know that shit? Ugh. <laughs> so they talking to Paula outside, and basically, you know, Golden was like, Rashawn was wrong for calling you a bitch, and I'm like, no, but I mean, if you want to put it that way, whatever the fuck, but, you know, ugh. I don't care, okay? You know, some people may say, oh, he was wrong. But like I said, shade me shade. Paula gonna act like she didn't know what she was doing by calling him girl. But we call each other girl and all this stuff. Bitch, quit fucking playing. Quit fucking playing. Mm -mm. I'm not buying this shit. So basically, they telling her, you know, Lisa was like, Rashawn is off the project. He got paid for his work, whatever the fuck. You know, we don't really want to work with Forrest. And they was like, what you mean? He was like, because Forrest don't own the writings to this shit. And he was like, yes, he do. He can do this. We get offers from networks and stuff every day, every week or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, bitch, where? Okay? Because if y'all did, you wouldn't be in this motherfucking predicament right about now. Golden basically said... I, I don't want to work with him, okay? We don't want to work with him. It is what the fuck it is. And, of course, Paula could not take the heat. Paula, you know, a person most time, not all the times, but most times when a person um has been defeated in an argument or, you know, their car has been pulled and truth has been thrown at them and they just don't want to catch it and see the reality of things, they just walk away with their tails between their legs. And that's exactly what Paula did. And um, Lisa was like, Paula, don't go. Golden was like, why do you keep running after her? Because Lisa is conflicted. She like, she want to believe that Paula wouldn't do nothing like this to her because that's her friend and all this stuff. But she knows, you know, some fuckery that's going on. So she like pulled, pulled this way and that way. But moving on from that, um... Paula had the nerve to say, and these three monkeys up here talking to me about my man and gonna say something I talked to. Because Goldie was like, bitch, why he always talking down to women and doing this and doing that? I don't know what's going on in your household. It was like, because I talk to him with respect, like the king that he is, and he treats me like the queen that I am. And I said, hold up. Stop fucking playing. But when she called that them three monkeys, I said, ain't that the pot called in the kettle black, bitch? Look at your ass. All you scream is e e i i, okay? Oh oh, all right. Stop fucking playing. These insults gotta stop. It just it just irks me. But um, Countess and her manager finding me so with um, you know, Corian is it Corian? Corian, bitch, whoever the fuck, the so called stylist, and basically was trying to see what the fuck was going on and tell them what's going on. And they came to, they was talking to him so respectful, like, laying it out. He got out of his body. Soon as he, with all this attitude, well, when you called me, I was doing this, and I went and got the looks, and I took it down to production at the studio to see what they wanted. And Countess was like, how are you going to take it to production without bringing it to me? Well, I thought you would trust my better judgment since we've been here. And, you know, the neck was just going all like this, and all this stuff, and yada, yada, yada. It was like, he did not call me. She did not call me. The last time she called me, I said, bitch, I'm up here doing all this stuff. And I said... So you really want people to take you seriously and you really want somebody to rehire you after this because they fired his ass. And I said, go ahead and fire him. At first, I was like, no, give him a chance. Maybe he can explain himself. But once you meet your employer like that, like you the employer yourself, you're just a fucking employee. And if they have issue with what you're doing, which is valid because Countess said this shit's been happening more than once. Okay. And most things it's like three strikes, you're out. First strike, you get a talking to. The second strike, you get a warning, and you probably get written up. The third strike, bitch, you're gone. All right? So, you know, you getting all huff and puffing your chest and all this shit, talking about some, you know, so I'm getting fired because of bad communication, and then going to get up like, girl, bye. You know, you didn't want that job. You didn't want that job, and you didn't want no hopes of getting that job back. And then you putting yourself out here looking the way that you looking, acting like a pure bitch, okay? A messy-ass bitch. That's what you're looking like. That's what you're looking like, and it was just disgusting to see. And I'm like, this is professionalism? This is professionalism? Where is it? It's just, ugh. It was just like, girl, fire his ass. You didn't need him around anyway. You weren't doing nothing for you no way. You could have picked that shit out yourself.
<laughs> so Paula, she takes her mama to an oxygen bar. Girl, why are you spending money that you need to be saving or you really don't have on some damn expensive-ass fucking oxygen that you can just outside? Okay, come on now. I get that it got different stuff. I don't know if that shit really work, you know. I'm... Mm. Maybe when I get fancy enough and go back to L.A., I might try some shit like that just to say I tried that shit. But girl, please, it ain't like that thing. And she was talking to her mama about what she was trying to talk to her mama about the white sisters and stuff. But her mama flipped the script on her and said, I'm talking to you as a mother. You need to learn to let go and let your husband be a man and get out there and get a job. And you got control issues. And she was like, girl, she in a confessional talking about some. Her mother is all this 1950s thinking. That is not 1950 thinking, okay? Ain't it somewhere in the Bible that it said that the man is the head of the household, okay? And he's supposed to be providing for the motherfucking family, all right? So, regardless of that, what man is comfortable enough for staying at home and watching their woman get up and go work? And he is not doing nothing but babysitting, being a house husband. I know, I understand if, you know, shit happens that he can't do that, that's understandable. Or if they well off and she just working, you know, because she want to work and he was like, fuck this. You know, I could be the house husband. I, do, I live my life or whatever the fuck. It's different circumstances. But they don't fall into that category of, you know, these special circumstances where that'd be okay. This man is able. This man is capable. He can go out there and do any fucking thing to bring in an income so that you won't be out here struggling trying to find a job here and there just to keep the fucking lights on. Do you understand me? So y'all can stop eating Easy Mac every night. But you don't want to hear that. And then your mama tell you that you should go talk to the, uh, y'all need to have a counseling session with the uh, pastor. You go talk to the pastor with him, by himself, before by yourself, before you talk to him with the, everybody else to see what he got to say. And basically, this bitch literally told him that the problem is her mama, you know, don't like the fact that Forrest doesn't have a job. Okay? And... You know, that her thing is she don't want him in any type of mediocre job. And if, like one time she gave the example that he had this one job that she felt was mediocre and she was going to Detroit, I guess, to film something or whatever and wanted him to come with her and she, to get him to leave the job and to come with her, she said, if you don't come, I'm going to sleep with whoever I find out there. That's fucked up. And that says what type of man Forrest is to allow or not necessarily allow to just put up with some shit like that and not put his foot down, his feet down. Even her own mama said, you like control. You want to control somebody. That's why you need help. And the pastor said that shit too. And I'm sitting here like, what type of bitch would do some shit like that? I don't give a fuck if y'all are struggling, mediocre or not. Get a job so it can look like you're doing something and you're trying. When people first start out, teenagers especially, they get mediocre jobs because they're trying to get a foot and, and some experience in the work world. So they know how to do stuff and they know how to how shit probably going to go. And then they elevate and they keep going and you keep going up and climbing that ladder in life. But you allow your man to stay down at the motherfucking bottom. And that's you letting him do that. And once again, what type of man is for us? To allow his woman or to let his woman to keep pushing him down like that. Get the fuck. I was just over it. Then, you know, Lisa and them go over Golden's house or whatever for, um, you know, Lisa's uh, hair shit. And they trying on weaves or whatever. Earlier, Lisa, uh, Golden went on a date with some producer guy and music guy. And she was just talking about that. So, you know, while Paula's having her little breakdown, Forrest and her mama come in and, you know, the pastor, you know, they come out and they start talking about what's going on. And basically the mama reiterated everything that she's been saying. Uh, Paula needs to let this man get a job. Even Forrest feel like he can do so much more than he's allowed to do. You know what I'm saying? But moving past that, early in the review, I said, what is this thing that Paula has with men? Then it comes out that Paula was molested when she was five years old. 
And, you know, her mom was just basically saying how she still blames herself and she has yet to forgive herself. Paula breaks down and, you know, you know, she's basically like, it's not your fault. I've been mm. forgave you. Even though this is a person that, you know, you brought into my life, I've been forgave you. Because I know when you found out you went fucking ballistic on that person. I was like, okay, she acted accordingly. But... If a parent really cares about their child, they're going to feel guilty and they're going to feel that hurt for the rest of their life that they allowed their child and that their child was put in a situation that probably could have been avoided, that they was hurt at a young age like that, that somebody came in and violated them. So it's understandable that the mom still feels that way. And, you know, she just got to, you know, let that hurt go so they can have a better relationship and move on. And that's what that hurt is fueling the mama to be controlling and protective or whatever over Paula, which in turn, like the pastor said, let me make this connection. So you see the way that your mama being controlling over you, you taking that control and you being controlling over your, uh, your husband. Mm hmm. So in a sense, you and her the same fucking person. Paula said, God damn. And I said, pastor, you good. <laughs> but that was basically the end of the episode. Um, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. I'm going to go watch catfish. Peace. So, you know, while Paula's having her little breakdown, Forrest and her mama come in and, you know, the pastor, you know, they come out and they start talking about what's going on. And basically the mama reiterated everything that she's been saying. Uh, Paula needs to let this man get a job. Even Forrest feel like he can do so much more than he's allowed to do. You know what I'm saying? But moving past that, early in the review, I said, what is this thing that Paula has with men? Then it comes out that Paula was molested when she was five years old. And, you know, her mom was just basically saying how she still blames herself and she has yet to forgive herself. Paula breaks down and, you know, you know, she's basically like, it's not your fault. I've been mm. forgave you. Even though this is a person that, you know, you brought into my life, I've been forgave you. Because I know when you found out you went fucking ballistic on that person. I was like, okay, she acted accordingly. But... If a parent really cares about their child, they're going to feel guilty and they're going to feel that hurt for the rest of their life that they allowed their child in that their child was put in a situation that probably could have been avoided, that they was hurt at a young age like that, that somebody came in and violated them. So it's understandable that the mom still feels that way. And, you know, she just got to, you know, let that hurt go so they can have a better relationship and move on. And that's what that hurt is fueling the mama to be controlling and protective or whatever over Paula, which in turn, like the pastor said, let me make this connection. So you see the way that your mama being controlling over you, you taking that control and you being controlling over your, uh, your husband. Mm hmm. So in a sense, you and her the same fucking person. Paula said, God damn. And I said, pastor, you good. <laughs> but that was basically the end of the episode. Um, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. I'm going to go watch catfish. Peace.